Funan or Nokor Panam was the name given by Chinese cartographers, geographers and writers to an ancient Indianized state, or, rather a loose network of states located in mainland Southeast Asia centered on the Mekong Delta that existed from the 1st to 6th century CE. The name is found in Chinese historical texts describing the kingdom, and the most extensive descriptions are largely based on the report of two Chinese diplomats, Kang Tai and Zhu Ying, representing the Wu Kingdom who sojourned in Funan in the mid-3rd century AD, 24. Funan is known in the modern languages of the region as Mem or Nokor Panam, and Fu Nam, however, the name Funan is not found in any texts of local origin from the period, and it is not known what name the people of Funan gave to their polity. Some scholars argued that ancient Chinese scholars transcribed the word Funan from a word related to the Khmer word Mim or Vinam, Others however thought that Funan may not be a transcription at all rather it meant what it says in Chinese. Like the very name of the kingdom, the ethno-linguistic nature of the people is the subject of much discussion among specialists. The leading hypotheses are that the Funanese were mostly Mon Khmer, or that they were mostly Austronesian, or that they constituted a multi-ethnic society. The available evidence is inconclusive on this issue. Michael Vickery has said that, even though identification of the language of Funan is not possible, the evidence strongly suggests that the population was Khmer. The results of archaeology at Ak Eo have demonstrated no true discontinuity between Ak Eo and pre Angkorian levels, indicating Khmer linguistic dominance in the area under Funan control. Based on the testimony of the Chinese historians, the polity Funan is believed to have been established in the 1st century CE in the Mekong Delta but archaeological research has shown that extensive human settlement in the region may have gone back as far as the 4th century BCE. Though regarded by Chinese authors as a single unified polity, some modern scholars suspect that Funan may have been a collection of city-states that sometimes were at war with one another and at other times constituted a political unity. From archaeological evidence, which includes Roman, Chinese, and Indian goods excavated at the ancient mercantile center of Ak Eo in southern Vietnam, it is known that Funan must have been a powerful trading state. Excavations at Angkor Bore in southern Cambodia have likewise delivered evidence of an important settlement. Since Ak Eo was linked to a port on the coast and to Angkor Bore by a system of canals, it is possible that all of these locations together constituted the heartland of Funan. Etymology Some scholars have advanced speculative proposal regarding the origin and meaning of the word Funan. It is often said that the name Funan represents a transcription from some local language into Chinese. For example, French scholar Georges Coeds advanced the theory that in using the word Funan ancient Chinese scholars were transcribing a word related to the Khmer word Nam or Vinam. However, the epigraphist Claude Jacques pointed out that this explanation was based on a mistranslation of the Sanskrit word Parvatabhupala in the ancient inscriptions as equivalent to the Khmer word Mim and a misidentification of the king Bhavavarman the first mentioned in them as the conqueror of Funan. It has also been observed that in Chinese the character is frequently used in geographical terms to mean south, Chinese scholars used it in this sense in naming other locations or regions of Southeast Asia, such as Anam. Thus, Funan may be an originally Chinese word, and may not be a transcription at all. Jacques proposed that use of the name Funan should be abandoned in favor of the names, such as Bhavapura, Anandidapura, Shreslapura, and Vyadapura, which are known from inscriptions to have been used at the time for cities in the region and give a more accurate idea of the geography of the ancient Khmer regions than the names Funan or Zanla are unknown in the old Khmer language. Sources the first modern scholar to reconstruct the history of the ancient polity of Funan was Paul Pelliot, who in his groundbreaking article of Funan of 1903 drew exclusively on Chinese historical records to set forth the sequence of documented events connecting the foundation of Funan in approximately the 1st century CE with its demise by conquest in the 6th to 7th century. Scholars critical of Pelliot's Chinese sources have expressed skepticism regarding his conclusions. Since the publication of Pelliot's article, Archaeological excavation in Vietnam and Cambodia, especially excavation of sites related to the Ak Eo culture, have supported and supplemented his conclusion. History Origins of Funan According to modern scholars drawing primarily on Chinese literary sources, a foreigner named Huntian established the kingdom of Funan around the 1st century CE in the Mekong Delta of southern Vietnam. Archaeological evidence shows that extensive human settlement in the region may go back as far as the 4th century BCE. 
Though treated by Chinese historians as a single unified empire, according to some modern scholars, Funan may have been a collection of city-states that sometimes warred with one another and at other times constituted a political unity. The ethnic and linguistic origins of the Funanese people have consequently been subject to scholarly debate, and no firm conclusions can be drawn based on the evidence available. The Funanese may have been Cham or from another Austronesian group, or they may have been Khmer or from another Austroasiatic group. It is possible that they are the ancestors of those indigenous people dwelling in the southern part of Vietnam today who refer themselves as Khmer or Khmer Krom. It is also possible that Funan was a multicultural society, including various ethnic and linguistic groups. In the late 4th and 5th centuries, Indianization advanced more rapidly, in part through renewed impulses from the South Indian Pallava dynasty and the North Indian Gupta Empire. The only extant local writings from the period of Funan are paleographic Pallava Grantha inscriptions in Sanskrit of the Pallava dynasty, a scholarly language used by learned and ruling elites throughout South and Southeast Asia. These inscriptions give no information about the ethnicity or vernacular tongue of the Funanese. Funan may have been the Suvarnabhumi referred to in ancient Indian texts. Among the Khmer Krom of the lower Mekong region the belief is held that they are the descendants of ancient Funan, the core of Suvarnabhumi slash Suvarnadvipa, which covered a vast extent of Southeast Asia including present-day Cambodia, southern Vietnam, Thailand, Laos, Burma, Malaya, Sumatra and other parts of Indonesia. In December 2017, Dr. Vong Sathara, of the Royal University of Phnom Penh, discovered a pre-Angkorian stone inscription in the province of Kampong Spibaset district, which he tentatively dated to 633 AD. According to him, the inscription would prove that Suvarnabhumi was the Khmer Empire. The inscription, translated, read, The great king Asanabharman is full of glory and bravery. He is the king of kings, who rules over Suvarnabhumi until the sea, which is the border, while the kings in the neighboring states honor his order to their heads. Kondinya slash Huntian Huntian The Book of Liang records the story of the foundation of Funan by the foreigner Huntian, he came from the southern country Zhao after dreaming that his personal genie had delivered a divine bow to him and had directed him to embark on a large merchant junk. In the morning, he proceeded to the temple, where he found a bow at the foot of the genie's tree. He then boarded a ship, which the genie caused to land in Funan. The queen of the country, Liu Ye wanted to pillage the ship and seize it, so Huntian shot an arrow from his divine bow which pierced through Liu Ye's ship. Frightened, she gave herself up, and Huntian took her for his wife. But unhappy to see her naked, he folded a piece of material to make a garment through which he made her pass her head. Then he governed the country and passed power on to his son, who was the founder of seven cities. Nearly the same story appeared in the Jin Shu, compiled by Fang Shuanling in AD 648, however, in the Book of Jin the names given to the foreign conqueror and his native wife are Han Hui and Yel Yu. Kondinya. Some scholars have identified the conqueror Huntian of the Book of Liang with the Brahmin Kondinya who married a Naga princess named Soma, as set forth in a Sanskrit inscription found at my son and dated AD 658. Other scholars have rejected this identification, pointing out that the word Huntian has only two syllables, while the word Kondinya has three, and arguing that Chinese scholars would not have used a two-syllable Chinese word to transcribe a three-syllable word from another language, Kondinya in the Chinese sources. Even if the Chinese Huntian is not the proper transcription of the Sanskrit Kondinya, the name Kondinya is nevertheless an important one in the history of Funan as written by the Chinese historians, however, they transcribed it not as Huntian, but as Kwiaokhenru. A person of that name is mentioned in the Book of Liang in a story that appears somewhat after the story of Huntian. According to this source, Kwiuk Henru was one of the successors of the King Tianzu Zantan, a ruler of Funan who in the year 357 AD sent tamed elephants as tribute to the Emperor Mu of Jin, he was originally a Brahmin from India. There a voice told him, you must go reign over Funan, and he rejoiced in his heart. In the south, he arrived at Pan Pan. The people of Funan appeared to him, the whole kingdom rose up with joy, went before him, and chose him king. He changed all the laws to conform to the system of India. Kondinya in the inscription of my son. The story of Kondinya is also set forth briefly in the Sanskrit inscription c. 96 of the Cham king Prakasadharma found at my son. It is dated Sunday 18th of February 658 AD and states in relevant part, it was there that Kondinya, 
the foremost among Brahmins, planted the spear which he had obtained from Drona's son Asvataman, the best of Brahmins. There was a daughter of a king of serpents, called Soma, who founded a family in this world. Having attained, through love, to a radically different element, she lived in the abode of man. She was taken as wife by the excellent Brahmin Kondinya for the sake of a certain task. Kondinya in the inscription of Topmoy. The Sanskrit inscription of Topmoy, which is now on display in the Museum of Vietnamese History in Ho Chi Minh City, refers to a prince Gunavarman, younger son of a king Ja who was the moon of the Kondinya line and chief of a realm wrested from the mud. Kondinya in Khmer folklore. The legend of Kondinya is paralleled in modern Khmer folklore, where the foreign prince is known as Pra Taeong and the queen as Niang Nik. In this version of the story, Pra Taeong arrives by sea to an island marked by a giant block tree, native to Cambodia. On the island, he finds the home of the Nagas and meets Niang Nik, daughter of the Naga king. He marries her with blessings from her father and returns to the human world. The Naga king drinks the sea around the island and confers the name Kampuchea Thiptii, which is derived from the Sanskrit and may be translated into English as the Lord of Cambodia. In another version, it is stated that Pra Taeong fights Niang Nik. The reference to an island is interesting and may further implicate Angkor Bore as a noted capital or primary center. Angkor Bore is surrounded by a 6-kilometer earthen wall approximately 20 meters wide and several meters high. The wall is amorphous with only one discernible geometric corner. The wall circumference mostly contours the settlement area and natural topography. It serves more as a water control mechanism than a defensive wall. There is evidence of brick interiors in some locations which may have been a feature of wall construction, or, the bricks may represent features within the wall such as a temple or shrine that intentionally articulated with the wall or was buried during wall construction and enhancement, much like A.K. Yum in the West Beret at Anchor. There is archaeological evidence of settlement and activity along and on top of the wall as well, particularly closer to the Angkor Bore River which transects the urban site through at least two wall openings. Areas closer to the river banks and dikes have much higher densities of artifacts and evidence of activity and settlement. There is a 20-meter outer moat in many locations and several moat-like segments on the interior of the wall. The removed soil was likely used to create the wall and further enhance hydrological engineering. Because of the high clay content, the wall is rather impermeable. During the wet season, the very flat surrounding floodplain essentially becomes a giant lake with the noted exceptions of Phnom Bore Mountain, Phnom Da Hills, and the urban Angkor Bore site appearing as islands. The dominant production economy also switches to fishing. Access to Angkor Bore is by boat rather than road. During the dry season, the situation is reversed where rice paddies and flood recession rice cropping dominate the economy and the land eventually becomes dry, also useful for some gardens, the ever-present sugar palms, and grazing. The archaeological material culture at Angkor Bore itself is very dense and highly variable with a wide spectrum of exotic items indicative of a prominent trade, production and redistribution center, Kondinya's Indian origins. Since most sources are vague on the exact origins of Kondinya I from India, delving into history especially through the lens of maritime history and ancient trade links as well as inscriptions analysis and customs from India is important in providing insights into the origins of Kondinya. Sanjeev Sanyal's book The Ocean of Churn, How the Indian Ocean Shaped Human History further looks into the origin of the name Kondinya, which points out that it is not usually a common first name in India but a gotra of a group of Brahmins who lived on the eastern coastline of India especially along the Odisha northern Andhra coastline. Thus this region corresponds to the ancient Kalinga region, which is important considering the early Indian mariners were trading from this region as evident from their ancient maritime history around 3rd century BC. The port of Palur which was referred to by Ptolemy as a prominent international port during the 2nd century CE, thus referring to its important role played in the maritime trading history. The strong links with Kalinga are also noted from the copper plate land grants given by the rulers of Kalinga to Kondinya Brahmins who lived in the Mahendrajri region of Ganjam, especially the Ragalu inscription copper plate grant of the Pitrabhakta dynasty, the prominence of Shaivite customs mentioned in the Chinese work history of the southern dynasties during the reign of Jayavarman Kondinya with regards to Mount Motan and Funan bearing close affinity with the early Saivite customs and its relation to Mahendrajri mountain which was the prevalent religion during the reign of different Kalinga dynasties. 
the diplomatic relations maintained between Funan and the Murinta dynasty of northern Kalinga during 3rd Ken CE also plays an important role in the relations between the two regions. Apex and Decline of Funan Successive rulers following Hun Tian included Hun Pan Huang, Pan Pan, and then Fan Shi Man, great king of Funan, who had large ships built, and sailing all over the immense sea he attacked more than ten kingdoms, he extended his territory five or six thousand li. Fan Shi Man died on a military expedition to Qin Lin, frontier of gold. He was followed by Qin Cheng, Fan Chan, Chang and then Fan Hsun, in successive assassinations. Before his death, Fan Chan sent embassies to India and China in 243. Around 245, Funan was described as having walled villages, palaces, and dwellings. They devote themselves to agriculture, they like to engrave ornaments and chisel. Many of their eating utensils are silver. Taxes are paid in gold, silver, pearls, perfumes. There are books and depositories of archives and other things. The Indian Chan Tan was ruling in 357, followed by another Indian Chiao Chen Ju in the 5th century, who changed all the laws to conform to the system of India. In 480, Shi Ye Pa Mo, Jay of Armin or protege of victory reigned until his death in 514. One of his sons, Rudravarman, killed the other, Gunavarman, for the throne, and became the last king of Funan. Funan reached the apex of its power under the 3rd century King Fanshiman. Fanshiman expanded his empire's navy and improved the Funanese bureaucracy, creating a quasi-feudal pattern that left local customs and identities largely intact, particularly in the empire's further reaches. Fanshiman and his successors also sent ambassadors to China and India to regulate sea trade. The kingdom likely accelerated the process of Indianization of Southeast Asia. Later kingdoms of Southeast Asia such as Chenla may have emulated the Funanese court. The Funanese established a strong system of mercantilism and commercial monopolies that would become a pattern for empires in the region. Funan's dependence on maritime trade is seen as a cause for the beginning of Funan's downfall. Their coastal ports allowed trade with foreign regions that funneled goods to the north and coastal populations. However, the shift in maritime trade to Sumatra, the rise in the Srivijaya trade empire, and the taking of trade routes all throughout Southeast Asia by China, leads to economic instability in the south, and forces politics and economy northward. Funan was superseded and absorbed in the 6th century by the Khmer polity of the Chenla kingdom. The king had his capital in the city of Taimu. Suddenly his city was subjugated by Chenla, and he had to migrate south to the city of Nafuna. The first inscription in the Khmer language is dated shortly after the fall of Funan. A concentration of later Khmer inscriptions in southern Cambodia may suggest the even earlier presence of a Khmer population. Despite absence of compelling evidence as to the ethnicity of the Funanese, modern scholar Michael Vickery has stated that on present evidence it is impossible to assert that Funan as an area and its dominant groups were anything but Khmer.